Uh, yeah. And so this is an opportunity. This is really obviously we're going to be streaming to the four people that are going to be watching it. <laughs> but the way that it's set up is we have our internal, um, we have internal people from the Human Early Partnership and others from potentially UBC, mom, dad. Just kidding. I don't think they're watching. Um, <laughs> but we would like to have everybody to come on. Um, first, again, going into the Bannock. So I bought the flower yesterday and this morning has gotten away. And so I didn't actually make it. But my invitation is for next Bannock and Badger that people bake their Bannock. We come on. I was thinking about doing the, the three different, having a bit of a taste test. So please, for next Bannock and Badger, um, that we we actually do have Bannock. <laughs> this time it's not even keto related, uh, but that we we hopefully endeavor. I don't know. Did anybody make any Bannock? I'm assuming no. <laughs> uh, so next time, I promise. Otherwise, Bannock and Badger is a little bit of fake news. <laughs> so we did pull this one from, um, and Jasmine was the, a little girl, and she has this. And I loved. I was mentioning. I got to found this beautiful image. I love these little Pac-Man shaped kind of Bannocks. Love that. So we'll be looking forward to that for next time. Okay. So, um, so everybody. Um, I am going to be sort of pinned. Uh, so there are people who are in the Zoom room with me, and then there's a live version that's happening. Uh, oops, sorry. Ah, streaming to the floor. No, sorry. Uh, there's a live version that's streaming online. And so I'll be uh, seen. But what I'm asking for people is that as we're doing this introduction, or sorry, this opening, that uh, they come off of uh, come off of your mute and say the words. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, have done this with me, but it's one of the beautiful openings that I love to have. Uh, now our minds are one. So um, this is. Uh, sort of one of the ways that we start our work, um, any kind of meetings, there's sort of a, um, a prayer. And this is, this is one where we invite everybody. Again, it's going to sound weird because there's going to be a bunch of, you know, echoes. If, if, if you've ever tried to sing on Zoom, this is, I know this. It's important, though, that we kind of hear each other collectively. Uh, we say, now our minds are one. So you'll know when to come in. So wait, let me drink some water here. OK. So we gather together and see the cycle of life continues. As human beings, we have been given the responsibility to live in balance and harmony with each other and with all of creation. So now we bring our minds together as one, as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. And now, now our minds mind 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 mind. We are thankful for our mother, the earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She sustains and supports us at our feet, as our feet move upon her. We are joyful in knowing that she continues to care for us as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we send greetings and thanks. And now, now our minds, minds are one. Are one. <laughs> we give thanks to the waters for quenching our thirst and providing us with strength. Water is life and we are thankful for its purity. We know its power in many forms, waterfalls and rains, mists and streams, rivers and oceans. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the spirit of the water. And now, and now our minds are one. We turn our minds to all the fish of the world. They cleanse and purify the waters of life, and they offer themselves as us to us as food. So we turn now to the fish and send our greetings and thanks. And now, and now our minds are one. 
Now we turn our minds to the many kinds of life-sustaining plant life in the fields and forests. The earth is covered with plants growing and working many oh, wonders. With stop. our minds gathered together, we give thanks and look forward to seeing plant life continue in all its diversity for many generations to come. And now, and now our minds are one. one. With one mind, we turn to offer special thanks to all of the food plants. Since the beginning of time, the grains, vegetables, beans, and berries have helped people survive. We honor all of the food plants together as one and send them greetings and thanks. And now, now, now our minds are one. Are one. one. Now we turn to the medicines of the natural world. From the beginning, they have taken away our sickness. We are grateful they are always waiting to heal us. And we are happy they, there are special people among us who hold knowledge of the healing plants. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the medicines and to the medicine keepers. And now, and now our, our minds, minds are one. Are one. We gather our minds together to send greetings and thanks to all the animal life in the world. We honor their wisdom and their strength. Animals have many lessons to teach us human beings and they offer themselves to us as sustenance. We coexist with them where we live and in the forests and mountains. We're glad that the animals are still here and that we hope they will always be so. And now, and now our minds are one. one. We now turn our thoughts to the trees. The earth has many families of beautiful trees, each with their own instructions and duties. Some trees provide us with shelter and shade, others with fruit and the other useful things we need to survive. Trees are symbols of peace, strength, and a reverence for life for peoples all over the world. With one mind, we greet and give thanks to the trees. And now, and now our minds, minds are one. one. We put our minds together as one and thank all the birds who fly about in the sky. Their beautiful songs each day remind us to enjoy and appreciate life. To all the birds, from the smallest to the largest, we send our joyful greetings and thanks. And now, and now our minds are one. one. We are thankful for the powers we know as the four winds. We hear their voices in the moving air as they refresh us and purify the air we breathe. For the four directions, they bring the change of seasons and messages. The four winds give us strength. With one mind, we send our greetings and thanks to the four winds. And now, now our, our minds, minds are one. Now we turn to the West and our grandfathers, the thunder beings. With their voices, lightning and thunder, they bring the water that renews all life. We bring our minds together as one to send greetings and thanks to our grandfathers, the thunders. And now no. our no. minds, no. minds are one. one. Now we send greetings and thanks to our oldest brother, the sun. Each and every day, he travels the sky from the east to the west, bringing with him the light of a new day. He's the source of all fires and of all life. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our brother, the sun. And, and now, now our minds are one. one. Now we put our minds together and give thanks to our oldest grandmother, the moon, who lights the night sky and governs the movement of ocean's tides. Her strength and wisdom are inside and around all women. By her changing face, we mark the changing seasons. And it is the moon who watches over the arrival of children here on earth. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the grandmother, uh, to our grandmother, the moon. And now, and now our, our minds are one. one. We give to the stars who spread across the sky, like who are spread across the sky like bright sparks. We see them in the night, helping the moon to light the darkness and bringing dew to the fields and gardens. When we travel at night, they guide us um, and our way. With our minds gathered together as one, we send greetings and thanks to all the stars. And now, and now our minds are one. one. We gather our minds to greet and thank all the enlightened teachers who have come to inspire and help people throughout the ages. When we forget the original teachings and how to live in harmony, they remind us of the way that we were instructed to live as people. With one mind, 
we send greetings and thanks to these teachers like Kinwa. Mm -hmm. And now, and now oh, our, our minds, minds are one. one. Now we turn our thoughts to the creator, to the life force of the universe. We send greetings and thanks for all the gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life in, is here in our natural world. For all the love that is still around, we gather hands together as one and send our choicest words of greetings and thanks for the power of love, life, creation and now, now our, our minds are, are, are one. one now we have arrived at the place where we end our words and thanking and acknowledging all the things that we have named we did not intend to leave anything out if something <laughs> forgot we leave it to each of you to send such greetings as we have spoken and to offer gratitude in your own way. And now, and now, and now our, our minds are one. one. Um, yeah. Did anybody want to acknowledge the territory, the land, our Mother Earth? I can start. That's okay. Um, I'm. I'm delighted to have the privilege of living on the stolen territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. You can see the, the sun streaming in um, to us today. It's, it's an absolute gorgeous day. It's, it's hard not to have a heart full of, of warmth and gratitude for what we experience on this land every day. Thank you. I can go. I am very gratefully joining from the traditional lands of the Huachal and Koro people um, in the, what is now known as the state of Nairit. I was on the beach this morning and um, just reflecting on the fact that this is the, this is the ocean um, which I go to most days when I am home on Vancouver Island and the traditional territory of the Comox people. And I was just reflecting on the connection that between here and there and that that coastline comes all the way down to where I am and how grateful I am for that ocean and, uh, and to be able to touch it. So thanks, Kimma. I am calling today from um, the unceded, stolen, traditional and ancestral lands of the Shishalt and Squamish nations. Um, I've been thinking a lot about land acknowledgements lately. Um, and, and what I think, and, and that they don't necessarily lead to action about the, that lands have been stolen and we are occupying them. But what it has done for me in my home is remind me that where I live does not belong to me. It doesn't, I, I might have purchased a place and a place that I call home, but it does not belong to me. And I have a practice that I've been doing for a long time, which is just to sit and imagine what did this place look like 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago. And it's, it's actually really, it's, it was hard for me to do at first and it takes a lot of grounding, but I'm, I'm so appreciative of, of these spaces to just um, share some of those practices and, and how people are acknowledging where they live. Wonderful. Uh, if there's anybody also out there that is streaming and want to include in the comments where you're Zooming or Facebook Live stream from, by all means, uh, include it. I'm monitoring, we have people. Uh, and so, so grateful for everybody to come and sort of share. Um, I hope, uh, do, well, does, does everybody have sort of their pens and paper? So just looking out at the group, I see everybody. Yay, lots of people. Okay, now put them down, put them aside. This is not what we're doing. <laughs> We are learning uh, by connecting deeply and uh, talking about 
Okay, sorry, hopefully you didn't miss that last couple of seconds. Um, so Bannock and Banter, uh, we talked a little bit about Undrip last time. We, I think we got two decades in, we still had a couple more. Uh, I was wondering if anybody had any sort of reflections um, while you're kind of thinking of potentially some things that did get shared. I was asked a couple of times, um, just, uh, yeah, just wondering, like, you know, what had happened over the course, uh, what changed, uh, like, how did, how did Canada come to, to, you know, change and agree, uh, how, what's going on with the implementation. Um, I also had discussed it in terms of, uh, like, thinking about, um, the Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe and relating how, you know, in some cases, you know, the Indigenous people could be sort of, I didn't say explicitly that we're the superheroes, <laughs> but in my narrative, we are. Um, and we get to have our individual, you know, each, each, each nation um, has their own sort of world or worldview, and we come into it uh, very much as, um, you know, as, as sort of newcomers uh, to learn and to be, to be um, sort of potentially allies, uh, to think about how we can support the self-determination or self-governing efforts. Um, how can we empower and strengthen uh, families and communities, um, our own children. And so, yeah, did anybody have any kind of reflections of Bannock and Banter from last time? We had such, such great uh, participation from some of our Aboriginal Steering Committee members and Elder Yana, but yeah, I thought I would just love if people had anything to share. Um, I have to say, for my part, I, I found it a really powerful session, um, particularly the stories that Elder Rihanna was sharing about her experiences of, of living through different times. And I, I remember the story about um, her community singing uh, their songs uh, that they thought that the Indian agent would want to hear when they came up, you know, every, you know, everybody calling out to say, okay, he's coming. And then they would start singing these religious songs. And, um, but just how, how those stories put texture into the reality of what life was like. And it's just, uh, they're so important, you know, because you can read the documents, you can hear about the history but when you hear about how that was experienced by the people who had to live under that, it, it just adds a whole other layer. And I just wanted to express my gratitude to Elder Rihanna for, for trusting us with those stories and for being willing to share them. Thank you. Beautiful. Any others? The other reflection that I would have at Shannon here uh, is a, a brief one, but it's just how long it took, Kinwa. You did such a good job of outlining the length of time it took for the declaration to be uh, in its all of its forms. So that, that stood out for me. Yes, and we'll see. Um, hopefully, we'll have a chance to discuss a little bit because of, you know, like the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's work too, how long it has taken, um, you know, for them to have done everything and then post, you know, what is happening. Um, yeah. One of the things that I did want to quickly kind of share, um, I, I left a bit of a teaser, the last one, uh discussing because because i talked about marvel and there were some questions of like wait i you know i haven't actually watched marvel <laughs> it's like who are you <laughs> any of those um so i said i would relate some of the content for today to harry potter and so i was thinking about it so i have been um 
I've been in law school for the better part of two decades. <laughs> uh, true story. And when we learn, one of the things that we do learn in law is um, how law can function sometimes as a sword or it can function as a shield. And I've been thinking a little bit about this in terms of like how, you know, well, in this case, like the sword um, is when like conscientious people ignore or denigrate or misinterpret the law. And then sometimes the shield can function when law is actually acting in a just way or so, you know, it's, it's, it's not only being good, but it's actually doing good. Um, and so uh, there, somebody had, oh, Sally had mentioned uh, property law. There's also, you know, a, a sort of a property law uh, related to that too, about how, you know, basically it can't be the cause of action, but can there like, can only function as the defense. So when I was thinking about this uh, and the work that we're doing, anybody, any individual, whether they're, you know, for their own family or for their organization or institution or within their community, any of the work, sometimes the work that we're doing can function as a sword or can function as a shield. And so in thinking about it more in, Sort of fun terms like with harry potter we can think about it in the sense of the wizarding wand and the invisibility cloak and so when do we when we take action or or don't potentially are we picking up the wizarding wand and you know taking action, creating change, you know, doing good. And when do sometimes we need to put on the invisibility shield or the invisibility cloak and, um, you know, sort of shield, you know, the work, uh, you know, the sort of the protection, the rights. Um, and so I hope that forevermore, we can think a little bit about when we're doing work that's a wand with the wand we're needing a little bit of um sort of magic uh, we have to actively take part in what we're doing and then when do we need to actually put on our invisibility cloak and um when we're working with children, I think that a lot of the work is actually cloaking them, you know, uh, from the harshness of the world until they're able to be able to pick up their own, you know, their own uh, wands. And um, and I thought about this yesterday because I was driving and my daughter, I was, she was like, I'm so over COVID. <laughs> it's like, Oh, honey, <laughs> you know, yeah, your grandmother got it and, you know, she has been impacted in ways, but not in the ways that so many, you know, so many other families are like, she still has a mom, we still have our home, you know, all of these things, like she hasn't lost anybody. Um, but it made me think of like, I, at some point it was, you know, sometimes people think of it as, as um, you know, sort of privilege or, but when we're working particularly with younger children or we think of it as i think of it sometimes as like you have to have the invisibility you know cloak on um yeah anyway i also that brings up the point that we are all creators in our own lives and um so at some point i'm basically calling on you because these are uh you know for the calls to action that you guys are everybody you guys are the wizards right so when are you getting to be the wizard and so i have a little video that i thought would be kind of cute this is me and my son kijik you're a wizard harry i'm a what a wizard and a thumping good and I'd wager once you trade up a little. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard and a thumping good and I'd wager once you trade up a little. <laughs> oh, this 
<laughs> so cute. Yes. So that, that was my son, Tijik and I. And basically, you guys, if we're wizards, we're in training, uh, we got to train up a little bit, right? <laughs> okay. That's just a little fun start. Hello, all my little wizards. Um, okay. So part of the overview of the TRC essentially was brought together to redress the legacy of residential schools and advance reconciliation. So the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada in its final report called on governments, educational and religious institutions, civil society groups, and all Canadians to take action on the 94 calls to action. So um, yes. So these 94 calls to action, um, you can, uh, we have some resources, uh, you're happy, you know, I think it, you should be able to go back, read them, read the summary report at minimum, but essentially the calls to action, there were sort of um, legacy calls and reconciliation calls. And so of the legacy calls, child welfare, education, language and culture, health and justice. Reconciliation ones involved, um, you know, the Canadian government and UNDRIP, there's been some changes on that, the Royal Proclamation and Covenant of Reconciliation, there's been settlement agreement parties, so church parties and UNDRIP, uh, equity for Indigenous peoples in the legal system, a National Council for Reconciliation, professional development and training for public servants, church apologies and reconciliation, education for reconciliation, youth programs, museum and archives, missing children and burial information, national center for truth and reconciliation, commemoration, media and reconciliation, sports and reconciliation, business and reconciliation and newcomers to Canada. So those are basically how all of the calls are um, set up or uh, like on over there under their headings. But let me just give you a quick overview because I do think that it's important just to get on the same page. Um, just a reminder, again, we were talking about timeline. So the Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement was the largest class action settlement in uh, Canadian history. It began implementation in 2007, so that was 15 years ago. Um, one of the elements of the agreement was to establish Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada to facilitate reconciliation for former students, families, and their communities, and all of Canadians. So between 2007 and 2015, over that eight year period, Canada provided $72 million to support the TRC's work. Um, it spent about six years traveling to all parts of Canada and hearing from about 6,500 witnesses. It hosted seven national events to engage the Canadian public, educate people about the history and legacy of residential schools, and to share and honor the experiences of former students and their families. So in addition to this, they created a historical record of the residential school system. And Canada at that time provided over um, 5 million records to the TRC. Uh, the national, uh, Center for Truth and Reconciliation is now out of the University of Manitoba. It houses all of these documents that were collected and um, you can like and follow on their socials because <laughs> they're pretty active. Uh, they, uh, they had uh, a session not too long ago about um, some kind of like the update to TRC uh, with a couple of um, experts and some of the, so be sure to go and stream that again. Brenda Gunn is uh, heading it up and uh, she's a lovely um, lawyer that I've known for a number of years. So in June of 2015, uh, I was turning 36. Again, these all happened on my birthday. <laughs> so for my birthday, uh, the TRC held its closing event in Ottawa, Ottawa, uh, my traditional territory and presented the executive summary of findings 
in its multi-volume report, including those 94 calls to action. So I don't know if any of you guys remember or can kind of play yourself or have any feedback, but I'd love to hear if you have any connection to that at that time. Uh, but there was this recommendations of reconciliation, right, between Canada and Indigenous peoples. And then, so that was the June, and then later in December of that same year, 2015, it had released its entire six volume final report. So of that, um, I was trying to get it, but I need to, I need to tidy my, uh, my, my closet <laughs> to get into my bookshelf. <laughs> They're away in the back. But anyways, they, I, I, I was sent, um, one of the final reports is so that you could sort of read it, but it is really, um, it is really important, I think, to revisit it, to look at the, both the calls, and if you can, at minimum, to read the summary. And so all of those documents are now, of course, online uh, at the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation on their website. You, so you can sort of, like, you know, if you don't have access to the copies or can get to a library, um, be sure to have um, a chance to check those out. Um, does anybody have anything that they wanted to share about that time or if they had connection or participated or attended any of those events? I thought I would just put it out there. I um, I had I was just reflecting as you were talking, Kenwa, I had the wonderful gift of um, being able to present alongside Justice Murray Sinclair um, in 2013, so before the commission had reported. And um, I'm just reflecting on what Mariana was um, saying earlier about Rihanna's stories. And again, the, the power of the stories over and above the power of the of the writing. So what 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 Justice Sinclair did as part of this presentation that I was uh, involved with was he showed some videos from some of the of the sharing of the people who had come to tell their truth to the commission, and I honestly do remember that it 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 it, it planted in me a totally different kind of way of understanding that it just was different, and uh, so I I will always remember and and treasure that. Uh, that gift, but it was just the power of the story of the people's videos that he shared at that event that that has just really stayed with me since, since 2013. So however many years that is, long time now. So you can share a uh, memory. Um, I was at Help on campus during this time, and Jeannie Sheveler was the interim director. And I think there's probably a few of us that walked over to the Museum of Anthropology and they had a lot going on, but the exhibit, ex exhibit that stuck out with me was, I think it was letters from, from the children at residential schools and some, some pictures that went along with it. And it was really immersive and just overwhelming just seeing the, the words and the perspectives from the children. It was, yeah, that really stuck out for me. Ah, lovely. Any any other reflections on it? I know that so the final report that came, um, I think, continues to be a testament of the courage and the bravery that each and every survivor and family member who had shared their story at that time. And then um, a lot of the sort of the, the work that I felt like I did this, you know, since the, um, the you know, the findings at um, Tecumlips to Schweckwick, like since that time, and of course the others, I, there were so many kind of spaces, meetings, um, ceremonies, circles that I sat in, where I, I really just heard and listened to a number of the survivors. 
And I don't even know if I can speak to this. So it, it was just one of the elders was um, in her in her pain of like she just spoke that when she had testified, and so it came back this summer. She's like, when I testified, my my husband and my daughter brought me down, but I did not let them come into the room because I never. She said, I never wanted them to know the pain that what had happened to me. And she's like, to this day, they still don't. And I, I just, it's moments like that. And so she was just talking about how painful it was from your trauma from the summer. Um, and it, this, it was just, you know, she was just sharing and passing, but I just think of like, sort of being blessed to listen and to hear. And there was so much pain um, being shared at that time, which I think in part has sort of like fueled, um, you know, this, this sort of renewed commitment to make sure that we are working to um, not just, you know, progress, you know, complete, further develop and implement these calls, but just like to sort of even, uh, I don't know, just to, to sort of share in that, right? So, you know, she wasn't able to share with her husband and her daughter, but she was able to just be supported and heard and listened to. And so I think that's so much of the work and the blessing because, you know, in 50 years, they're not going to be here anymore, right? So we're only going to have, you know, those words, those letters, you know, Maddie, that you were talking about, the archives. Um, and it, yeah, it, it's just like, there's just so much work to be done, you know, to sort of rectify that pain and heal. And I think when I think about what's most important as we move forward, is just looking at like, oh, the hope and the potential to heal um you know to heal the generations the elders the matriarchs you know our leaders our knowledge keepers we were talking about our medicine people to make sure that they're able to be healed and to be healthy uh, to be happy and healthy uh, so that they're able to carry on their own purpose and the work that they're doing um and yeah and the potential and possibility of hope um and so i know that's the work that i do i like i very much like to have the invisibility cloaks on you know so that we can be able to sort of do the work right we need to do the work that we want to do um and sometimes we do have to pick up sort of the wand and take action uh and sometimes we have to just like just like the kids you know, we have to be cloaked sometimes, you know, um, and and keep things kind of light and love and, uh, you know, make it sort of fun, right? Uh, and so lots of laughter, you know, the things that are really important to create that sense of health and well-being amongst um, not just, you know, uh, our survivors and our families, but for everybody, because doing this work can't be done, you know, just by indigenous peoples. It takes so much, right? Uh, nation to nation relationships, uh, recognition of rights, respect, cooperation, collaboration, partnership. We have to do that with people. And if, you know, if we don't get the sense of, um that we have to be able to work together in a good way and it's got to feel good it can't <laughs> we're not going to get very far we're not going to get very many people who are keen on doing this hard work and it is hard work um it, it's not to sort of you know uh not acknowledge that but it, it is 
it's you can't be doing the hard work all of the time and it be a slog you know some people can uh i need the light and love to lift us towards that visionary sort of work that we need to do and to to you know to strengthen and empower our um you know our next generations so i'd be happy to hear if um there are ways that we can continue to to share the light and love to be able to, you know, move us forward through this work, you know, because it, it, it's been a very tough, challenging year, in addition to all these other things, right? Anyone? I can, I can weigh, weigh in. Um, I think I, I mentioned this the other day in, in one of our meetings, um, but I, th I think over the last year, I have, uh, last year and in, in, in years before, um, but, but really in, I used to feel like the responsibility around operationalizing our responsibilities in the calls to action was where we had to put our energy. And I, I don't think that's not true, but I think, Kenwa, what you have really highlighted for me coming in to help is, is around the, what are the other dimensions that have to be alongside that work? What, how else do we, do we actually have to think about the way we open our hearts and, and love ourselves and each other uh, to really be able to do the kind of more the, the work around responsibilities like that that opening up is part, part of the and I think for me joining the grandmother circle um, having the time with the, the ASC members I know I think Rihanna and Duane are here over the years has it's been a journey to that it's not it's not like you can just dive in and do the work the work is long and I think that just reflects back to what you were saying is that you have to find the hope and the joy in that or, or know there, there will be hope and joy in that, um, in that. And so I'm just really grateful for, for understanding that the journey isn't just this like, which calls to action do we have to work on right now and make a plan? Like it's much more wide open and nuanced and it's about our own selves really engaging in that shared history and understanding how we are ourselves going to show up within the work of the organization. Uh, and it's, it's just a longer, a longer process. Um, yeah. yeah um, you know, systemic, systemic and structural change <laughs> it takes time um as much as you know we kind of like to wa wave our little wand uh it, it does take time to sort of rectify those harms and build the trust and you know uh even sort of visioning right i love to be in the blue sky <laughs> you know what's possible what's potentially there for us to work towards um but yeah, I, yeah, one of the things that they did, okay, so the, you know, I, we did, sh we did share a resource um, and uh, we'll be sure to share that uh, there's a number of things about, you know, the progress of how things, how many have started, how many are completed, what is the progress, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so we do have that link. Uh, the Yellowhead Institute also monitors them, but three that kind of happened this year, one was that it appointed uh, the call to action 14 appointed appointed the language commissioner and uh, we had our national day of truth and reconciliation that was action 80 and uh, there's something that happened with the citizenship oath as well i was thinking about the language commissioner and sort of the importance of language we've been doing quite a bit of work um, here at the uh, Human Early Learning Partnership around Indigenous languages. And 
the potential of like how that how we continue to support right and so sometimes i think about the work we've been doing work around translation i myself try and incorporate as much indigenous language as i can and sometimes the work is not necessarily for the translation but for the capture the knowledge capture this you know the more self determination or the support of it um because you just never know yeah you just never know like the work you're doing acknowledging the language the use of language how to support it might be a different conversation that we're having in 10 or 15 or 20 years like we were talking last time a little bit about the maori and the language nests um and sort of the 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 importance of yeah sort of grounding language and you know in in this case we are i feel like kind of using the um the want to proactively take action when we're you know developing surveys we include whenever we use language whenever we honor it whenever we um whenever we reference it uh i think that's something that's so important and um yeah the uh, language commissioner i feel like that I'm, I'm not you know i'm not gonna lie i feel like that one should have happened a long time ago uh that feels like an easy an easy win um and i know millions and millions of dollars have been sort of put into languages but it's so important uh such important work because again the language and the ability to sort of think about worldview think about you know all the teachings of what it means you know for anishinaabe <laughs> I mean, one of the conversations my grandfather has, has passed quite a long time ago but i remember when i was really young because he was he was passionate about education could travel from sandy lake first nation come down and visit in and when he was in town in ottawa i would go and i'd visit him and and i remember talking to him about the language so uh, they speak Oji Cree and Ishnabim when and I and I remember being like, oh, but you know, like I don't I don't speak it. And he said, yet. He said, he said, when the time is ready, it'll come. And I and I remember being like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so I was a funded student from Northern Nishnabe Education uh, Council, and they would I would call up you know, to speak to um, one of my education counselors, uh, Dale Anderson, shout out to Dale. Uh, but every time I would call, they would have it like in English. Um, but then sometimes the English wouldn't come in and it would just be like Anishinaabewin, like in the language. And, but because I was calling so often that I ended up learning whole of the message. <laughs> So I remember going back and like, you know, talking to my grandfather and being like, what am I saying? And I wish I had it like, if I heard it again, I would probably just be able to, but I would say it. And he was like, oh, to talk to elementary, press one, to talk to secondary, press two. And I went, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I would just hear the message, right? For so long. Anyway. Um, you know, the importance, I guess, of like language. And I, I hear sometimes some people say like, oh, I, I don't speak my language or I don't. And there's sometimes there's shame with that. And I just think, oh, as a language learner, not just, you know, my own language, but like other languages, I've learned to just kind of be open to it and making mistakes. So I remember being introduced um, at one point, like this is early, I, it's not that long ago. <laughs> early in my language journey with Anishinaabe when, and I went um I so in my community uh on my dad's side uh so much of the language is still you know spoken all the time and so when my dad was introducing me to someone I heard him say Donis you know and the guy like kind of gestured to me which means sort of daughter and I went Kinwa mean, which is like the Tarzan version of being like me, Tarzan, 
you, Jay, right? Like I, that's how, I, and they just kind of smiled and like, you know, and I was just was like, okay, well, <laughs> this is where I'm at. And this is my learning journey. And now like they would send me, you know, tapes, right? You would have to get your language tapes and, you know, uh, like you learn, you know, hi, like just like you would see in those sort of movies of learning. Now it's so different to be able to like with the advance of technology, technology like technology is really shifting the way that we're able to do all of our work you know with zooming and you know connecting to families and communities and uh language speakers and you know there's you know so many language speakers who are you know sharing on tiktok at the and it's any any kind of action i feel that we're taking is always good um yeah anyway i i just thought, thought like you know sometimes we think it's like the big stuff we need to have you know a language commissioner we need to be able to and then sometimes i go you know what um one of the girls that i know from kitiganzibi is posting and she just posts like little sort of TikTok type snaps, you know, of just her videos of, of using the Algonquian language. And I just think it's so beautiful um, because, you know, for those who are learning, all of us are, and, you know, you don't have to be Anishinaabe to learn how to, you know, to speak a language or to get an indigenous language, um, just to be open to it and to know how to pronounce you know, at, at minimum, the territory that you live in, you know, there's so many things like that, that I feel like help to, to strengthen and empower, um, you know, Indigenous communities, which in turn help to strengthen Indigenous families and children, you know, and the sense of belonging and who they are and their wellness. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all I hear that it. voice. Yeah, I'm all about the little wins. I like the little wins. I was I was talking about this book that I'm writing, and so far I've only got the first line. And it says, in the grand scheme of things, I just don't believe there should be a grand scheme of things. And, you know, just adhering completely to my culture on these pieces, right? And we're talking about relationship, and we're talking about creating relationship and 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 looking at these, these, these uh um the ideas around relationship. And, and when I work with my groups, I say relationships are work, right? They just shouldn't be work 24 seven. And the little pieces in between the little, the little moments in between that we find, we should hold on to those, especially these pieces around language, because those are the things that are going to tie us all together. And uh, I brought a young group uh, to the all native tournament uh, for the um, intermediate division here. And, and one of the local politicians, uh, completely butchered. I'm going to say completely butchered the, um, his his uh, his attempt at Somalia, and the young people with me were all whooping and, and hollering, and I, I put my hands on two of their shoulders, and all of them looked up at me. And I said, "The honoring doesn't come in accomplishing." I said, "The honoring and the courage comes in trying." I said, "That's where it comes from." I said, "In the end, they said, if he as as long as he continues to try, uh, he'll get this right. But if we stand here and laugh at him." he'll discontinue trying. And that's what happens within relationships is we discontinue trying. And that's what's going on right now, I think, is, is we're, we're, we're coming out and we're looking for these moments and looking for these pieces. And for me, it's not about what I run into externally that, 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 that brings my heart down or, or makes, the, makes that attempt any darker, right? It's actually about what I carry with me for this person that is on this on the other side and say, well, I'm sorry, you're really struggling with this, but no, I've got this stuff for you. And I really, really, really want you to have it because my people have survived with it for 10,000 years and this place is failing without it. And I said, so, and, and this is what I'm consistently going back to. And of course, going back to my work with help is is and I say this in every circle that I'm in and people say well why how do you do that and I look at them and I say the same thing every single time because your children are my responsibility as a get and max person so, and that's you know that's why so it's it's not like what we run into externally and it gets tough 
Um, we run into this in relationships as well, things that, that, that confront us and it gets tough, but we work our way through them. We're in the process of working our way through them. I love how much process keeps coming into these conversations, Kinwa, because that, that's, you know, that's where I live, man. Like I, I, I am consistently, I'm in process for the rest of my life, every day of my life, all the time. I don't ever let it go. But again, too, people say, well, where do you get that from? And I say, well, that's my culture. That's getting the max culture. And that's the, well, my understanding, because I can only go with what my grandfather taught me, right? And I can't go outside of that. But really, really, really important pieces. And, and the thing is, it's little pieces. It's those little things that we look at as being insignificant or, or, or um, they're, they're, they're inconsequential. But if you build up enough of them, right? If you build up enough of them, that's your bridge to a different place. That's your bridge to another place. If you build up enough of them. So I don't, uh, for all of you here, I'm going to tell you right now, there is absolutely nothing insignificant about you. Everything about you has value. Everything about you is celebratory. And, and, and if we can move into this relationship building with that type of an ideal, that's where we get the courage to try the things that feel uncomfortable. My wife's not First Nations, and, and she still tries to, 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 to say the, the, the name. Actually, we just got a new kitty, and we're going to name him. We're, we're, she wanted to name him Iski. And she said, now, but now she says it perfectly, you know, <laughs> and before. But again, too, is if all I do is tease her, she doesn't try to say it at all. And the ski it just means funny. That's actually the only really bad derogatory word we have in our language but as far as children go. It's a ski, and it just basically means funny. <laughs> it just means silly, goofy. That's all it means. You know, so that's 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 as derogatory a word as we have around children. Yeah, I heard it a lot just saying. So, you know, um, but yeah, no, that's that's how I'm looking at it now. And, and these these pieces that come up and like Sally brought up is, is this idea around process. I'm in the process. Awesome. I celebrate your process. I absolutely celebrate your process. I will I will pull out the Rocky pose for your process all day. Okay. Amia, thank you. Oh, to regrets, Dwayne. That's wonderful. No, I, and that's essentially like, I love to create these spaces uh, of holding people up for them to acknowledge and see their beauty, you know, their purpose um, so that they can be, I feel like so much of us are being weighed down and they, we don't get to do what we do best. And so, I don't know, I guess that's, that's part of, I think, the work of sharing love, light, you know, for ultimate health, happiness, and, you know, creating a sense of purpose and belonging. So we are coming to the end. Um, I feel like I could do this for half a day more. <laughs> Luckily, we've got another one coming. Uh, we have the next one posted up and it's um, it's the Bannock and Banter. We're going to be focusing on missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, the 2SLGBTQQIA+, uh, so in reclaiming power and place. Again, um, I think next time I'm going to relate it to um, uh, Lord of the Rings. So I've got some teachings around that and the work of uh, doing this. So happy to have had uh, spent this hour with you in my pajamas. Looking forward to joining you next time. And chi mi quetch, yes. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Kimwa. Thank you, Kimwa. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Thank you. Great, Bye -bye. great way to spend the hour. Yeah, thank you. Be safe.